International justice has been established and thought of not only for to give punishment, but to offer reparation to the victims. There are many convictions, especially from the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, that says that reparation is not only about pecuniary compensation, but that reparation is there to satisfy the right to truth and the right to justice of the victims. Victims of violations of human rights that are punishable have a right to know the truth, have a right to receive a service. And the right to justice means the obligation to investigate, prosecute, and, if necessary, to sentence. And now, I'd like to give the floor to our panelists. So first of all, we have Luis Guillermo Perez Casas, Secretary General for the American from the Fed International Federation of Human Rights up until 2003. Oh, it is not inter-American, it is international. Okay, I correct myself then. He is a lawyer by the National University of Colombia. We also have with us Juan Mendez. He is the rapporteur, special rapporteur of the United Nations on torture and other um, inhumane treatment. Special rapporteur on torture for the United Nations. He is a special advisor to the public prosecutor of the ICC on crime prevention visiting professor at the American University of Washington Law School and also American president of the International Center for Transitional Justice. To my right, we have Juan Carlos Senao Perez. He is the rector of the Exenau University at Bogota. He is the lawyer of the Externado University in Colombia. He is specialized in administrative law, public law, and he's got a master's degree in public law from the um, Pantheon Assas University in Paris. And he also has a PhD from the same university. Well, the organizers have given me instructions for me to ensure that speakers do not take longer than 15 minutes for their presentations, so that we ensure that we... Thank you, Dr. Renau. As you made your presentation, well, it came to mind the abundant case law from the Inter-American Court for Human Rights which unfortunately had had many opportunities to rule on human rights in our region. And we see this wide case law on reparation. First of all, Indian American Court of, for Human Rights and the European Court as well said clear state accountability and responsibilities. It's not about individual responsibilities. Those rulings have an impact in domestic legislations regarding individual accountabilities as well. And so they set the level of accountability since uh, as they need to be prosecuted. And so they explain how states, since these are crimes that are indictable to the state and so they need to be repaired. And when it comes to reparation, money, money, which is uh, as dignified uh, a request as any other, and uh, well, money and many other material reparations, there is this wide case law which states that it's up to the state. It is an, an application for the state regardless of individual responsibilities. And we need to, be, to, to stay clear here. We've seen quite a conceptual development when it comes to reparations. The questions that we've been asked, well, for all of us, even for the chairperson as well, 
Because the chairperson got many of the questions. And actually, some of the questions are actually remarks. And well, it's difficult sometimes. This, this one for the chairperson. So I take it first. Isn't it about time to use international criminal law to prosecute financial and environmental crimes that entail damages for victims of an scope as large as, as it is the case when those damages affect fundamental rights? Should we not, not claim for reparation for victims? When we say crimes here, when we say offenses, we're talking about individual responsibilities. We're talking about criminal accountability. So to what extent an environmental crime is to be considered international crime? Well, domestic legislations usually have included environmental crimes into their law. But in order for it to become international, in order to be qualified as international, it needs to be included in some kind of document, of international document. So it needs to meet the requirement of the principle of a legitimacy or legality. Lawfulness. It is unavoidable. Since we do not have an international parliament, the only way to do so would be, well, the most similar one would be a convention or maybe a custom or general law principles as well. But then, if you're talking about environmental crimes or financial crimes, economic crimes, and we want them to be considered international crimes, they need to be coded in one of those documents. Then, of course, we can argue about it and uh, we can do so here and see if these kind of behaviors which are not punishable according to domestic law, whether they should be included into international criminal law, which is a different topic in regard of which, well, this is about legislenda. And in that regard, uh, I can only say my own personal opinion. And I think so, yes. They should be, because we've seen, we've witnessed in the case of the recession and economic crisis here in Spain and elsewhere, where we could set what the, the reasons have been and the abuses there have been. And so victims were, uh, are entitled or should be entitled to our work protection because those are financial behaviors that should also be criminalized in the international criminal law. Same goes for environmental crimes. Those crimes where nature is affected. In this world, the world we live in, the world whose, which uh, financial development is based on endless growth or indefinite growth, used, using limited resources. So it comes a point, it's come a time of development where we've realized that environment needs protection, not in abstract terms. It's not just the environment, it's our environment. It is the environment of mankind. And that's one in Latin America, and I'm talking about uh, Ecuador's constitution, where it, is, it, it includes the protection of Pachamama according to Antini nature, uh, sorry, uh, tradition, which means that nature provides for us which is a concept which may be alien to Europe, but it makes sense, especially now that we see that economic and financial development industrialization leads to the destruction of economic resources. So if we are talking about worthiness, yes, it is worth having it there, but whether they are actually 
and currently punishable because they are a violation of, of rights. Yes, they are a violation of rights, but about them being punishable, uh, what they are not punishable because they are not present in any of those documents and so they do not meet the principle of legality. And that's all I can say.